Welcome to Was It Something I Said, the panel show all about quotations that takes on the daunting task of analysing anything ever said by anyone ever. For instance, Tony Blair once said, My soul is and always will be that of a rebel. That's debatable. Tony Blair's got a soul? <laughs> on Mickey Flanagan's team tonight is actor, author and man whose dealings with the Inland Revenue are above reproach, Charlie Hickson. <laughs> and with Richard Iowardi is comedian and writer, Jimmy Carr. <laughs> Here to read our quotations is an actor who once said of his first day at school, I'd never had a fight before, but I remember laying him out flat and I never had any more trouble. <laughs> That's certainly one way to deal with a maths teacher. <laughs> Please welcome star of Homeland, David Harewood. <laughs> so, our first round is called Threesomes. All our panellists have to do is match a series of quotes to one of three celebrities. You can also play along at home by following at something I said on Twitter to unlock extra clips. The theme of this week's threesomes is ego. Can we have the first quotation, please, David? I can go into restaurants and a whole table will get up and clap if they recognise me. In a minute, I'll give you three people to choose from, but any initial thoughts about that? I think this is, surely this is some sort of sporting side. The only, the only time I've ever seen this is when footballers walk into a restaurant and they've just won a thing and everyone goes crazy and nuts and I could imagine that happening to a... A game. Yeah. <laughs> called a match, isn't it? No, I call it a game. A game. <laughs> I mean, football is a game. I'm not going to disagree I, with you I there. call it a game of kicks. <laughs> <laughs> you but, call soccer ball a game of kicks? Yes, a game of kicks. Well, you're not a real fan. How dare you? <laughs> Those men, if one of the Game kicking of men, kicks. if a grown man who wears shorts for a living and yeah. does kicks walked into a restaurant, you'd get up and clap him, wouldn't you? I doubt I'd recognise a man who played the game of kicks for a job. <laughs> um, also, we're dismissing the possibility that this is a slow hand clap of derision. <laughs> uh, which is, yeah. Just that really. Yeah. So it could be someone very obese. And it's a slow hand clap waiting for them to get to the table. <laughs> I think you're more likely to do a trombone noise. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if anyone really obese has ever walked into an all-you-can-eat buffet and the gays has gone, now you're having a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, think, I, think the, I think the crucial difference... The crucial difference is between this country and America is we've got eat as much as you like, they've got eat all you can. Oh, yeah. Yes. And there's, like, a sense of challenge in that, isn't there? <laughs> in some restaurants in America, they actually give you a free meal to take home. <laughs> Which is extraordinary. Yeah. I think that's a that's a takeaway, man. I'm going to narrow down your options. Who said uh, I can go into restaurants and a whole table will get up and clap if they recognise me? Was it media mogul Rupert Murdoch, singer mm. Lady Gaga, or Ugandan dictator Idi Amin? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Idi Amin, if he was in Uganda, I feel there would be a sense of, we better get up and clap. You yeah. know what he's like. Yeah. <laughs> it's all beheady when he gets cross. Yeah. <laughs> Rumours of cannibalism as well, you know, you don't want to end up on the menu, do you? <laughs> was he a cannibal? Did he really eat someone? Is that a real thing? There were rumours. His family did try to sue the makers of the King of Scotland for implying that he was a cannibal. Mm. Did they think that would worsen his reputation? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's... <laughs> I've got to say, legally, he's on shaky ground in terms of libel generally being about your reputation. <laughs> also, he's dead and you can't libel the dead. So. Ah, you oh, say, right. you can say what you like about the dead. You know, Hitler was gay. <laughs> <laughs> he can't sue. <laughs> can't you just leave Hitler alone? Haven't yeah. he had enough flack? <laughs> He had one bad seven to eight year patch. <laughs> and everyone's on him. I'm going to give you a clue. OK. I can tell you the person that said this also said they'd like to be remembered as being a catalyst for change in the world. I, I don't think it can be Rupert Murdoch. Where on earth would he walk in where people were like, yeah? Mordor. Maybe... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got to be Gaga, hasn't it? 
You I think, don't know people yeah. would recognise yeah. her in a weird way. She's kind of a bit well, of a she blank canvas. Well, I think I saw her on the tube once. <laughs> I think I genuinely, I think I saw her on the tube. I saw someone really dressed down, no makeup, in a hoodie on the tube. This is a hell of an anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it was her. I mean, yeah, yeah, it doesn't really... Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't build. <laughs> I should have lied, Jim, in the second half of that story. I just said, oh, she, I saw her on the train and she had a shit in the corner of the chair. <laughs> <laughs> the Shepherd Oyster car. <laughs> was she reading Metro? No, she was not reading this Metro. This story doesn't stand up, Jim. Do you think Lady Gaga would definitely read Metro? I think you're just trying to get attention. Say, I saw Lady Gaga. Oh, maybe it wasn't. Oh, sorry. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think Lady Gaga? Charlie and Mickey. I'm Charlie, I'm thinking more. I think so. no. If he comes in and he's in charge of Uganda... Yeah, but he's saying, if they recognise me. <laughs> Who wouldn't recognise him? Yeah, but that's why I say he wouldn't say, if they recognise yeah. me. He would just say, when I go in restaurants, people clap. Hmm. All right, so we're saying Lady Think Gaga. That's your Lady team's Gaga. answer, Lady Gaga. <laughs> Lady Gaga. <laughs> um, Richard and Jimmy. I think that's got Idi written all over it. I, I think I think it's him. You you think? Well, I think Lady Gaga. It sounds like the kind of thing that she would say. You have to decide as a okay, team. Okay, fine. Yes. You're well, saying Gaga. Gaga. But I feel like we could fall out if I got this wrong. The thing is, I've said it, so I can always go, yeah, Jimmy, what? <laughs> at the end, and then I can gloat. So let's go for LG. Okay, we'll go so with LG. It's win-win. If you're right, you get the point. If yeah. Rich is right, he gets to gloat. Yeah. So you know, it's like so my marriage. Every <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is saying. That it's Lady Gaga. Well, the answer is Rupert Murdoch. Oh, so you're all wrong. Oh, I gloat. No, hey. I thought it was Lady Gaga. I Why did. would you say that after you've been told, you crazy <laughs> fool? <laughs> <laughs> David, how did, you, how did you get the part of a CIA bigwig? Do you know? Do you know? I auditioned for the part in my bedroom. In my bedroom, I recorded myself on my phone and I uploaded it online and they said, yes, you're the man to play the head of the CIA. Why are you doing an English voice now? Can you do your homeland voice, please? <laughs> he, he's a completely fictitious and made-up character. I can't really make him up. David, David, what if I sort of start you off? <laughs> you know I can do all accents. <laughs> Go on, then. Ciao. Ciao, David. How are you doing about <laughs> What did I say? Give me a line. Give me a line. Someone send, give me a line. Send them all to Guantanamo okay. Bay and then drown them a bit. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here we go. Send them all to Guantanamo Bay and then drown them a bit. <laughs> David, can I ask you a question? Did you know whether he was going to blow himself up at the end or not? Were oh, you... I haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> Can we have our next quotation on the yes. subject of ego, please? I myself consider myself the most powerful figure in the world. Once again, it's one of Rupert Murdoch, Lady Gaga or Idi Amin. The way it's phrased, it sounds like a Lionel Bart sort of Oliver the Musical. <laughs> I myself consider myself... <laughs> 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 it sounds it's the of... artful dodger when he discovered cocaine, wasn't it? He, just, <laughs> he got all self-centred. I oh, consider myself the most powerful girl in the world. <laughs> That's exactly the voice I had in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I said Lionel oh. Bar. Wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Finished that. Oh. I'll get that a cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> I said every cockney song stars. <laughs> They all be up in their chairs in a minute, demanding jazz and they turn up. <laughs> David, I wouldn't ask you, because you're from Birmingham, did you never come out of character and sort of go, what do you fucking mean he's going to blow himself up? <laughs> I got rid of my Birmingham accent on my first day at drama school. Why would you do a thing like that? Well, you, you, you have to. Some people find it very difficult to get rid of their native accent. Yeah, I know. When, when mine le left me, I thought my... <laughs> I thought my identity was just lost. How did you, how did you get I went back to the poor people and I said, talk to me, I need to talk to you. <laughs> talk to me again. You oh. didn't... <laughs> right, okay. oh. Very good. He's a Very man good. of a thousand voices. <laughs> so who do you think said this? Who's most likely artful dodger out of Rupert Murdoch? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Idi Amin. <laughs> I'm leaning towards Idi Amin on this one. Oh, I think... I think it's got to be her, cos she's so deluded, isn't she? Lady Kaka. <laughs> Jimmy and Richard, have a, have a guess. What, you think we're not? <laughs> go on, go on, go on. You think we're, we're just go on, go on. playing with you? Yeah. Actually, we know, but we're just trying to <laughs> look like bumbling fucks. <laughs> yeah. David, we're going to go for Rupert because... Oh, oh you're changing. Uh, despite, yeah, despite the other two, I can't see... I know he was quite big in Uganda, uh, <laughs> which is quite a good singer. Sing right so, or song, though, yeah. So, so, <laughs> but I think he would say something like that. He would genuinely consider himself to be that important. I think Lady Gaga, she's, she's culturally incredibly important and she knows it. OK, those are your answers. Well, they're both wrong. The answer is ah. Idi Amin. <laughs> How would he have sounded when he said that, Mickey? <laughs> <laughs> if I close my eyes now, what would his voice have sounded like? <laughs> it sounds the same with your eyes open, the eye thing. <laughs> Do you know what title uh, Idi Amin liked to be known by? Mister? <laughs> Not Mister, no. Esquire. Not Esquire. Madam. No. He used to like to be known as His Excellency President for Life Field Marshal Al Hajj Dr. Idi Amin Dada VC DSO MC Lord of all the beasts of the earth and wow. fishes of the sea and conqueror of the British Empire in Africa in general and Uganda in particular. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, Lord of all the beasts of the earth and fishes of the sea. That's that's nice. It's quite a claim. What about <laughs> frogs? <laughs> Leaving the frogs out. He's leaving bird life out, <laughs> except when they land. He's, <laughs> leaving, he's leaving out gas. He's leaving out gas. <laughs> he's leaving out dolphins aren't included. He has no, no say over what Igneous they do. Igneous rock doesn't get a look in. <laughs> he's leaving out trees. All flora. All flora. All flora. <laughs> and other margarines, he's not. <laughs> what about penguins? Was he in charge of penguins? A penguin is definitely a beast of the earth. I'd what say. Beast, are they? When was the last time you looked at a penguin and thought, fuck that for a while? You're wobbling to walls, mate! Fuck your beast, Emma! Get a bit of fish. <laughs> Armin invited himself to London six months after coming to power. Over coffee at Buckingham Palace, the Queen asked him, Tell me, Mr. President, to what do we owe the unexpected honour of your visit? Uh, any idea what he replied? So, what, did he abseil in? What do you mean? He, he just turned up. You can't just turn up. You can if you're president of Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> did he try and propose to her or something? <laughs> did he proposition her? No, he said, to explain his visit, in Uganda, Your Majesty, it is very difficult to find a pair of size 14 shoes. <laughs> <laughs> did he think she was running Clark's? <laughs> I suppose he was thinking, I'll pop in on my way to Clark's. Do you think he was flirting? Because there's a thing with big feet and that being, you know, people thinking that you might have a large... Why is this just being addressed to me? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see him right next to me, on? Did yeah. he flirt with... Was he saying, I've got I size 14? I don't I've know. Got well, if I said to you... I don't know, Jimmy! Uh, uh, I wasn't there! I'm I don't gonna know try what he's trying to do. I'm going to try now. If I said... Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult I'm to just find... Here. I'm here to quiz about quotations, not to go through this psychodrama with you. <laughs> Is it... You're so close to me. <laughs> why? 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 What are you hoping will come of this? <laughs> Nothing's going to come of this, Jimmy. <laughs> can you see how far back I'm leaning? <laughs> this is as far back as I can lean. I don't like this moment. <laughs> Anything about it? <laughs> no, no, stop the moment! <laughs> Why can't this stop? Can this not stop? I think I should stop. Yes. <laughs> so, at the end of our threesomes round, I can tell you that the teams are tied. <laughs> Over the break, see if you can complete this quotation from Charlie Chaplin in 1914 when he was renegotiating his contract with Keystone Studios. 
All I need to make a comedy is what? Tweet your answer to at something I said and we'll see you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Welcome back to Was It Something I Said? Before the break, we asked you to complete this quotation from Charlie Chaplin. All I need to make a comedy is what? Any thoughts, panel? His moustache, Charlie Chaplin's moustache, was Hitler's based on his. <laughs> Jimmy, I can't believe you're trying to mine Hitler for humour. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I know this. A park, a policeman and a pretty girl, because it's alliterative. Also, that scenario now is cause for concern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it no longer applies in comedy. Could we have the full quotation, please? All I need to make a comedy is a park, a policeman, and a pretty girl. Well done. <laughs> I would... Thank I you. would try to have a pretty girl, because... It's a park, it's a comedy. Yes, the full quote was, all I need to make a comedy is... Timing. Of... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, the full quote was, all I need to make Repetition. a comedy... Repetition. <laughs> You begin to make me look like a moron. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the full quote was, all I need to make a comedy is a park, a policeman and a pretty girl. Also, all that's needed to end a promising career as a politician. <laughs> um, David, you, you, you're known for very serious and intense roles. Have you ever wanted to be the clown? That's how I started acting, just messing around at the back of a uh, class at school. How good is your voice? Why is my voice so nasal and weird? Why is, your voice is amazing. It's because I think it's the theatre. I, I love the theatre. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and think of that. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I've had lots of training. I've, I have had training. How dare you? I... <laughs> How where, is, where is your training? Did you train to be a comedian? Uh, no, I didn't train. Oh. In anything. <laughs> I, I literally... Have no skills. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I have don't, nothing. I don't have any skills either. I have no skills that humans it. actually need. I you, can paint I can... and decorate. He... <laughs> <laughs> you can paint and decorate. You're a plasterer. No, you're you... a painter and decorator. And painter and. and oh. I, what I can do is I can sit behind an inexplicably shiny desk <laughs> and poorly read things. <laughs> of the, you know, in a survival situation, <laughs> these really skills good. are not no. needed. I'm not even trusted to read things out. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> they'll eat you before they'll eat me. <laughs> <laughs> now, our next round is called Keywords. We give our panellists a few keywords and ask them to work out the whole quotation. So, for instance, if we gave you fight and beaches, you would, of course, have to work out a quotation from Churchill or from a lifeguard in Magaluf. <laughs> OK, here's one from US President Abraham Lincoln, taken from one of the greatest speeches of American history. Every American school kid knows this quote, but do our panellists. As your first clue, David, can we have two key words, please? Score and seven. That is a, a very famous quote. It's the Gettysburg Address. Mm. I can't necessarily Speech. get it word for word, but yeah. I think it was... I didn't do very well in my local pub's darts tournament. <laughs> I only got a score of seven. <laughs> <laughs> Four score and seven years. Isn't it something? That may well be part of it, but I'm going yeah. to need more of it. Mm? Okay, four score yeah. and seven years ago, we started America. That's the gist of it. Well, mm. And it was based on the principle of uh, all men are equal. That's the gist. It is. Yeah. You're in the right area. Can we have the third key word, please, David? Equal. I think Jimmy suspected equal. Yeah, something, something about all, all, men, all, men, all men are created equal, which I don't it, think... I, it, from what my girlfriend says, is not the case. Some of her ex-boyfriends have been <laughs> terrific at stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to press you to a specific guess. I'm going to have a bash, but I, it's, it's okay. not going to be right. Have a bash. Is it four score years ago and seven, our forefathers declared that all men shall be equal? I'll, I'll take that and I'll raise it. Four score and seven years ago, our forefathers... That's what uh, I said. Fa yeah. ..founded... This country on the principle of equality... Principle that all, that, uh, that 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 all, all men, men are equal. Well, you've both... I mean, you've got... Quite, let, can we have the full quotation, please? Thank In an American you. accent. <laughs> four score and seven years ago... Our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty 
and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. How good that impression. I, I, I think both teams did very well. You got the four score in seven years and the all men are created equal. There wasn't so much new nation conceived in liberty coming forward, but, uh, you know... When that came up, I didn't even know who he was. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't know who he was. I just thought, who is the geezer? <laughs> he looks like the lead singer of Mumford and Sons. Or <laughs> Those words are the opening line from Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, delivered uh, on November 19th, 1863. In Look, Gettysburg? It, yes, and it is regarded as one of the greatest speeches in American history, along with uh, ouch from George W. Bush when he fell off that platform. <laughs> so, at the end of our keywords round, a quick look at the scores tells me that Richard's team is in the lead. <laughs> so, up next is a round called What Are They Talking About? You're going to hear a quote that's been taken completely out of context, an idea we got from the Daily Mail. <laughs> All the panellists have to do is work out what the hell that person is talking about. Here's a quotation from actress Catherine Zeta-Jones. Can we hear it, please, David? It happened once, and we thought there were paparazzi around, so we had to go into the bushes. <laughs> well, I think it's a classic piece of misdirection. You want us all to think it's something rude, and they were having oral sex to cure his throat cancer. <laughs> 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 but it's probably, um, Bird watching or something. <laughs> I'm very happy to go down the oral sex road. I'm <laughs> sorry, that's not. I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can imagine him though. He'd probably get halfway down her and go, "Where am I going? What?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if he's halfway down, isn't he in the right place? Well, <laughs> I start oh. at the tits. <laughs> I'm just, sorry, I'm just trying to think of the scale of this. I don't suck my wife's head, if you put it This is not about uh, oral sex. Okay. Uh, they, they were playing golf at the time. So they were doing something unrespectful whilst playing golf? That's... Up for you to guess. I bet they were <laughs> swimming naked in a lake or somewhere where... They were playing golf, we've established that. <laughs> just said they, wasn't, they wasn't playing golf. They were playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> well, they weren't playing golf, then they are playing golf. No, 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 no there was no course. time they weren't playing golf. They're playing golf. All the time? No, when... <laughs> they, they get up in the morning and then they go, where's the clubs, come on? They were playing golf at that time in, in the scenario she's describing. So they were playing golf. No, <laughs> they weren't playing golf. <laughs> 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 yeah, they were. They were playing golf. Naked. Golf. They were playing golf naked. Did a bird shit on them? Did something? They need to pee? Did they? I don't know. These are plausible answers, but they're not correct. Well, let's see, David. Can we have the full quotation? We have a rule: if he duffs a ball and it doesn't go over the woman's tee. He has to expose himself, <laughs> take his pants down. It happened once, and we thought there were paparazzi around, so we had to go into the bushes. So, hang on, so if he hits the ball, if he sort of makes, messes up the shot, he's got to flash? Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, that's really incentivised the paparazzi to follow them round the whole 18 holes. She's saying this as though it really is a rule, but... This isn't a rule. <laughs> <laughs> you can play golf without doing this. No. They have that rule. Yeah, but they sh I'm saying... They find they golf insufficiently interesting <laughs> without this additional without rule. Yeah. <laughs> but what's not clear, of course, is what does she mean by pants? Yes. Does she mean trousers, so he just has to show his boxer shorts? You know, a little bit embarrassing, but, you know, not the end of the world. Or does he have to actually get his cock out? <laughs> does she well, make her the elderly husband would be... take his cock out in shame? <laughs> for being such a weak golfer. <laughs> you see, as he ages over the years and his golf gets weaker and weaker, she shames him more and more. <laughs> Show me your cock, you weak <laughs> You are terrible at golf. You can barely putt now, you lose it. But go in the bushes. Out. And do it in the bushes yeah. in case someone photographs your <laughs> yeah. sad old cock. Yeah. <laughs> Take it furtively out of your trousers and show it to me, old man. Take it. This is golf. Yeah. This is fucking golf, you shit. 
you think he necessarily just always gets his cock out, or do you think they play the cock and ball game? What's the cock and ball game? Well, you just you expose a little bit, and you the, uh, uh, the your opponent has to guess is that cock or ball? This is a <laughs> this is a game. You've never no. played cock or ball. We'll play now. Well, I'll get out of bit, and you've got to tell me whether it's cock or ball. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> we were closer. You were closer, so we you were. didn't get the point. Yeah. Well done. We're coming back. So at the end of that round, the scores are tied. <laughs> Over the break, see if you can complete this quotation from rock star Ozzy Osbourne. Something he said on the Osbournes TV show when talking about his regrets. Could have been worse, I could have... what? Tweet your answer to at something I said and we'll see you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Welcome back to Was It Something I Said? Before the break, we ask you to complete this quotation from Ozzy Osbourne. Could have been worse, I could have... what? Any thoughts, panel? Married Sharon? Oh, bollocks, I did! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The most famous thing he did was bite the head off a bat. It could, we were saying it could have. Did he do that really? Yeah, I think he, yeah, did, he did. Do that. He did. He, but uh, there was a, it was an Where accident. Where do you source bats? Well, someone, someone threw, threw someone threw a bat onto the stage, and he thought it was a plastic bat. He thought, oh, what an amusing thing! I'll bite the head off this bat, and crunched into it, and oh. quickly realised, oh, I haven't cooked this. <laughs> It's not horribly. It's a dead bat. Well, well, once the head was finished, off, finished. No, before. No. Well, how did I they must know have to throw dead. it onto the stage? Why didn't the bat just fly off? Maybe the bat had died that afternoon, and the owner thought, "How would he really like to see? You know, yeah. <laughs> who, who better than to take him to a gig and hope that Ozzy bites yeah, his nut off?" And then I thought, "Just see a good friend." <laughs> it. It's what he would have wanted. He was a bat. <laughs> It's, it's not that. No. Uh, David, could we have the complete quote, please? The correct quote is... Could have been worse. I could have been Sting. <laughs> Ozzy has also said, Out of everything I've lost, I miss my mind the most. <laughs> <laughs> now, our next round is the Was It Something I Said round in which each team has to work out who said the following quotations. It'll either be from one of us on the show tonight or from our virtual guest, Piers Morgan. So, obviously, the stakes in the show have just shot up as everyone on the panel stares right down the barrel of the possibility that a quote of theirs is about to be judged the sort of thing Piers Morgan might say. <laughs> so, first up is Mickey's team. Who said the following? Was it Richard, Jimmy, David, me or Piers Morgan? I think I had my midlife crisis when I was 26. People are having them earlier. It's to do with life speeding up. So, was it Richard, Jimmy, David, me or Piers Morgan? Well, I can't say I've ever seen Jimmy have a crisis. No. And I can't... It I might be David, Richard's although... having a continual crisis. Yeah. <laughs> David was middle-aged when he was about 13. Mm. <laughs> I'm aiming towards, quite heavily towards David, yes. Yeah. Which David? That one. Me. Yeah. The hairy so, one. Is that, is that... <laughs> That's the only way I can tell you apart. Yeah. <laughs> so is that your answer? Yeah, we'll say you. The hairy David. Well, no, it wasn't oh. me. It was Jimmy Carr. Oh. So. You pansy. <laughs> <laughs> so was it good to get your midlife crisis with over? Got it out of the way, you know. Yeah. Left my job and went and started doing stand-up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like a not a full midlife crisis, but you know, a little but you bit. just wait when you get a proper midlife crisis. Yeah, yeah. When well, what the... happens in the proper midlife crisis? What, what have I got? All on the post? hell breaks loose. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have the next uh, quotation, please, David? I was a bailiff one summer. I did it for about two hours, and I just left. I couldn't stand it. So, was it Richard, Jimmy, David, me, or Piers Morgan? We can rule you out. Can you? You would yeah. never have been a bailiff. I'm handy. You <laughs> <laughs> either pay up or we're taking the motor. <laughs> it's, it's like I'm in the room. Are yeah. <laughs> so you ruling me out? Are we ruling yeah, you out? I'm going to rule Richard right out. Yeah. Even though he is a fan of Hitler, I cannot see him as a bad <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> to, to be a proper bailiff, I think you have to have a real clear line between what's right and wrong. Do you? That rules Jimmy out. Yeah. Straight away. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, David, David's got the physical presence there. To Thank you very much. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> and he can act. He could go up. What, right, babe? <laughs> I didn't want to do this, but I'll get my foot in that bar. Birmingham, Birmingham. Oh. Sorry, love, we're going to have to take the money. <laughs> At the same time, it could be Piers Morgan. So it's a toss-up between David over there and Piers Morgan. We're going to say Piers Morgan. You're going to say Piers Morgan? Yeah. Well, you're wrong. It's mm. David. Oh, we were so close. What's the story there? Well, when we were at drama school, we all basically had to do take summer jobs. Mm. Just to kind of get through. And, uh you kind of turned up at this place and they just allocated you a job. Mm. Sometimes it was cleaning and sometimes it was doing whatever. And this one day I was allocated this job as a bailiff and I kind of went to the first house and there was this little old lady and we had to go in and take her cabinet. <laughs> and... Are you sure? Honestly. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you didn't get a job as a burglar. <laughs> She'd obviously paid for this cabinet on HP and she couldn't afford it and we had to take it. And I put it in the van and I just said, I'm sorry, I'm off. And I just got out and walked home. Have you still got the cabinet, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a fair price for it, mate. <laughs> it's not what you think of people buying on higher purchase, is it? A cabinet. It was I mean... a kind of very elaborate kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. it's a, it's, she's a poor old lady who's got into trouble because of her elaborate cabinet habit. <laughs> Oh, oh, I mustn't. Oh, it's such a beautiful cabinet. <laughs> put all my knickknacks in just that one cabinet. He said, I've got nine other cabinets I still haven't paid for. It was a nice cabinet. I mean, I would have had it. Yeah. Well, you, you did, did. have it. <laughs> <laughs> so, next up, it's Richard's team. Who said okay. the following? Was it Mickey, Charlie, David, me, or Piers Morgan? I like waging feuds. They get me going and make me perform better. I don't start them, but I always finish them. That's Piers Morgan, surely. <laughs> also, make me perform better. I mean, that's a twat. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's not someone in this room. Then. <laughs> we will categorically say that I'm... was said by a twat, and we think it's Piers Morgan, but if it's anyone here, we'll stand by the twat remark. It's... OK. <laughs> yeah. This is grade A twatish. This is, these are the words of a oh. twat. OK. <laughs> well, the answer is... Piers Morgan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can we have uh, the next quote, please? If I met my 16-year-old self now, I'd probably think he was a bit of a twat. <laughs> so, was it Mickey, Charlie, David, me <laughs> or Piers Morgan? I think it's David. <laughs> I think that might be in your biography. I think you might have said that in a kind of self-deprecating kind of a... I used to play a lot of board games. And you'd think, I would now disrespect a teenage player of board games... Yeah, maybe ..rather not. than envy him. <laughs> his glamorous lifestyle. No, you were in a band, weren't you, Charlie? I was, yes. So you were in bands when you were 16? No. You... I, was a, I was a bit of a twat, though. <laughs> <laughs> He's just said. As watertight as that is, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think it's David. What was, well, hang on, what was Mickey doing when he was 16? I imagine you had, you had a, what, a couple of kids? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a couple of different mums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just coming to the end of me drinking days. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's Charlie, you think it's David, let's go Mickey. Compromise position. Mickey. I'm happy with that. Well, the answer is Charlie Hickson. <laughs> was that not a clue? You when he said <laughs> he said he was a twat when he was 16. Was that not a clue? Should we have not have gone with that? He said it. He I said, said it. And we both heard. And I said, well, we should go for him. And then you said, I just. You look so like Roger Federer. <laughs> 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 to me. <laughs> I'm, all I'm thinking is, why am I playing tennis? <laughs> it feels like we've had a real breakdown in communications. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. And a quick look at the scores tells me this week's winners are Richard and Jimmy. <laughs> Thanks 
Cheers to Mickey and Charlie, Richard and Jimmy, and to our guest narrator, David Harewood. And we leave you with a surprising revelation from Virginia Woolf. One has to secrete a jelly in which to slip quotations down people's throats, and one always secretes too much jelly. And I believe Virginia Woolf's excessively secreted jelly is now available at Waitrose. <laughs> Back for more, was it something I said on Sunday night at 10 o'clock? And next Friday night, Channel 4 unleashes a brand new comedy. Greg Davis is teetering on the edge. Meet our main man down at 9.30. Next tonight, the pumpkins are coming out. Time to party. London Irish, Halloween. <laughs>